Welcome to Electra Online and in this example we're going to show you how to find the moment of inertia of a truncated cone. It's a circular cone that rotates about its axis. And so you can see that the axis runs along the x-axis right here. This is the y-axis. Notice that the length is equal to L, the radius at the base is equal to R, and the mass would be m and the density would be rho. And of course the density can be found by taking the mass and divided by its volume. And so the density of this would be equal to the mass divided by the volume of a cone would be the area of the base times the height times one third. So it's uh, divided by one third pi r squared times L. So that would be the density of the cone. All right, how do we go about doing that? The best thing to do would be to slice it up like this. Take a little slice like a little disc. The disc would have a little thickness dx. It would have the radius equal to y. So the radius in this direction would be equal to y. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, that will work. And so the, the volume of that, the dv, is equal to the area of the, of the circle. That would be pi y squared times the thickness dx. So that would be the volume of that. The mass of that, dm, would be equal to the density times the volume dv, so it would be equal to the density times pi times y squared times dx. Okay, and so as it rotates on its axis, we take this little disk right here, as it rotates on its axis, we can say that the moment of inertia, let's call it a di, a small portion of the total, would be equal to the mass of that disk, Oop, not the mass, it would be one half the mass of the disk, because it's a solid disk, so it would be one half dm times the radius, uh, yeah, times the radius squared, that would be times y squared. And dm, of course, we can get from there, so that means that di is equal to one half times dm, which would be the density, times pi y squared, times dx, and times the y squared right there. Okay. So that would be the, um, what we call the moment of inertia of this little disk. Now we want to find it for the whole cone. We're going to have to integrate it all the way from x equals 0 to x equals L. So that means that I would be equal to the integral of all the di's. And that would be from x equals 0 to x equals L. Um, and that would be equal to 1 half. And let's say we can pull out some of these constants already because one half rho and pi are constant, so that's one half density times pi times the integral of y to the fourth times dx, going from x equals zero to x equals l. All right, so far so good, but notice now we have a y here and a dx, so we have to find a relationship between the y and the x, and so since we can see that this here is kind of like a y equals mx plus b kind of equation, y equals mx plus b, and notice that the b is equal to zero because the intercept is right at the origin, so we have a relation between y and x through the slope. And the slope of the edge of the cone is going to be the ratio of the rise over the run, which is r over l. That means we can write y equal to the slope, which is r over l times x, which means we can replace y to the fourth by x to the fourth, r to the fourth, divided by l to the fourth. And that way, at least, we have our dx matched up with the variable. So we can write i is equal to, um, might as well put it in terms of a fraction here. So we have the density times pi. So instead of y to the fourth, we're going to write r to the fourth divided by l to the fourth times x to the fourth. So we have r to the fourth in the numerator divided by 2l to the fourth in the denominator times the integral from x equals 0 to x equals l of x to the fourth dx. All right, so now we have the variables matched up. We can go ahead and take the integral now. The integral is relatively straightforward. So we can say that i will be equal to the density times pi times r to the fourth divided by 2l to the fourth times, when we integrate x to the fourth, we get x to the fifth divided by 5 with the limits going from 0 to l. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limit, we get L to the fifth. So we have I 
is equal to the density times pi times r to the fourth times l to the fifth divided by 2 times 5, which is 10 l to the fourth. And you can see already that you can simplify the l to the fifth and the l to the fourth, which is just simply left, left with an l in the numerator. One more thing we have to substitute is come back here and find that the density can be written as 3 times the mass divided by pi r square l. So we replace density by this. Let's see what we get. So the moment of inertia is equal to the density, which is 3 times m divided by pi r square l. And then we have left, we have a pi r to the fourth l in the numerator, and we have a 10 also in the denominator. All right, simplifying again, we can get rid of the l's, we can get rid of the pi's, we have an r to the fourth and r squared, so r squared this becomes r squared, and so now we have left that the moment of inertia is equal to 3 times the mass times r squared divided by 10, or 3 tenths m r squared. That is the moment of inertia of a solid cone like that. That's how we do that.